This is Chaitali Bhatt, Chief of Bureau with Aviation and Defense Universe. Today is a great day as we commemorate the 195th Gunners Day, and we have with us a very popular face of the Indian industry, Indian defense industry, who led the Make in India drive for Indian Army's artillery corps. We welcome Mr. Jent Patil, member of Executive Council of Management and Advisor Defense and Smart Technologies to CEO and MD LNT Limited. Also, former whole time director and member of the board LNT Limited. We welcome you, sir, and thank you so much for your time that you have given to ADU. We also welcome Sangeeta Saxena, editor ADU, to take this discussion and talk more about Gunners Day and more about LNT at this juncture. Welcome, both of you. Thank you. Thank you, Chaitali. Thank you very much. And thank you so much, JNG. So wonderful to see you here. Our audience will be absolutely elated. You know, LNT is a brand we all Indians identify with. And it's the trailblazer, absolutely, and just the right company to talk about on Gunners Day. You know, it has taken us forward in the march of Atma Nirbhar Bharat and Make in India. But before we begin, sir, what is this beautiful little trophy in front of you, sir? We'd really like to congratulate you. The news today morning was that you have just got it yesterday. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Sangeeta ji. In fact, uh, the trophy in front of me is an SIDM uh, annual awards, which are uh, given at the hands of Honorable Raksha Mantri. So this is an award which uh, we received yesterday for the infrastructure we created uh, at our Hazira Armored Systems Complex. The award category essentially is the, the testing facilities that have been built, if they are truly out of a completely, so it's a completely integrated plant from manufacturing to the final testing of uh, the armored systems. And that is this year under that category and that's what the award is for. So it was an honor receiving it uh, from uh, Raksha Mantriji and uh, he remembered that last year also Lassen Dugo had an award for our shipbuilding in terms of the shipyard infrastructure that we built. So of course at Lassen Dugo we created enormous amount of infrastructure and that's uh, all of it differentiates itself with the best in the world. Yes, sir. Absolutely. I could not agree more with you, sir. It's one of the best things to have happened. It's given us a path, sir, in India. We always thought that we wanted to be independent. We wanted indigenous material. We wanted indigenous products, especially arms and equipment. And suddenly today, India has everything it wants within itself. We just saw so much happening on the indigenous front. We have a aircraft carrier, which is absolutely indigenous. And now, you know, not even a month since we celebrated INS Vikram, we are here to celebrate Gunners Day, which of course is a core of the Indian Army, the core of artillery, which is celebrating a day it was incepted on. But would like to be with LNT as a part of the Gunners family of India. Uh, I think as part of the Gunners uh, family, Lassen Dubro had an opportunity to join this family. I remember it's exactly 33 years uh, since we started working with the Gunners. Uh, it all began with uh, Pinaka. And uh, that was the first... Uh, a complete weapon system that, of course, with radio uh, the overall developer for Pinak and Post. Of course, uh, this is something which having been done well, and uh, of Pinaka then became uh, the first uh, Indian, I would say, completely indigenous weapon system that the army inducted, and that was the vision of the gunners that we saw. But uh, there were ones who really believed that uh, we can do something in India. And the leadership, which of course I know among the governors as uh, DGRT and of course uh, beyond, 
uh, have been very very consistent about their long term vision i think why we see uh, gunners to have completely differentiated among all of the brand they achieve is that overall big picture uh, the leadership has maintained that continuity nearly for about last 25 years i see it and out of that we have actually uh, adapted uh, and inducted into the armed forces began as i said with uh, pinaka bm21 uh, was needing an upgrade uh, so that's another major program that we were associated with so the entire bm21 happened here of course vajra was an icon uh, by itself and uh, we created a very differentiated system because we knew that uh, whatever is available in the world uh, history has it that for two decades we tried varieties of solutions but none of them performed in indian climate so we knew what uh, exactly won't work in india or what needs to be done to make the system work in india and that's essentially was the success behind vajra having truly done uh, replacement of uh, about 16 17 major such systems out of what the k9 was known for so from k9 thunder to k9 vajra was a story wherein enormous amount of changes were identified actually undertaken as development projects completed inducted into the first trial system and then we had uh, something that never happened in the indian equipment history uh, with indian army that 100% parameters of a weapon system which are laid down are met by vajra besides of course there are many other artillery program one is associated with we built a tor gun and uh, this was built uh, with an armament from uh, france but the entire below armament what we know as a complete uh, tor gun system was indigenously designed and built uh, we also have enormous presence in brahmos as you know we were among those strategic partners to brahmos for nearly now about 24 years to be precise so this is essentially where from a short range to a long range across uh, i would say artillery's uh, presence there's a presence of lassen to group behind all that we learned out of uh, the gunners is stay focus long i mean like the long ranges they talk of the vision has been relatively quite long term and they really mean when they said this is the next generation systems and we will create a differentiators out of our thinking which essentially will go beyond horizon because in bulk of the uh, battlefield scenarios you don't see the horizon so if you have an ability to see beyond horizon you actually can target and that's exactly where a pinaka that started as 39 kilometers today is available as a version beyond 80 kilometers interim is also available so this is one weapon system that has grown in terms of uh, where you want to target and you have an option of a rocket with it yes sir absolutely and so when as in when we've been developing rt is developing lnt is developing its facilities for it we wanted to understand that uh, you know we already till now you know when we hear of vajra it seems that we've come to an end of a program and of course you will have your follow on orders so what else is on the plate lnt has for the indian artillery sir i think what we did in vajra was uh, out of uh, a, a truly out of box solution because vajra was created for uh, desert uh, we know the challenges of uh, deserts we know the challenges with high temperature we know the challenges with sand uh, and varieties of other issues associated now from that environment from very high temperatures and uh, uh, altitude which essentially is near Uh, mean sea level uh, vajra of course uh, the artillery was forward looking our neighbors were belligerent enough to sort of encourage uh, some of these equipment to go in high altitude regions for variety of reasons i won't name the places but uh, it did go and uh, we had as part of our in house uh, research 
already undertaken uh, acclimatization for the high altitude regions low i mean high altitude low temperature uh, capability to be built into the same vajra and uh, as a r&d model uh, we had one set of this extra fitments which are pluggable into an existing system and that's exactly what uh, we were asked to do call it uh, at that point in time ncnc because uh, a weapon system inducted but uh, there is no process by which you can say that you do something and we'll test it out so it was uh, done as a matter of an r&d project and uh, of course the guns perform exceedingly well there is far 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 better than what it would perform on uh, you know the desert kind of a scenario and uh, the mobility was uh, i would say adjust to be far superior to anything that india has in those locations now this is essentially where we see some of those future orders that class and bro would be getting out of uh, the vajra uh, stemming out of because the army has actually seen that this is a class of weapon system that performs irrespective of which area you put in we have also started seeing last two years as a result enormous amount of equipment which army is coming out with specifications and the gsqrs actually has said that we want an equipment which performs at high altitude as well as in deserts so terrain agnostic operation is something which is specified into the three battle tank program which are the rfi have have already been issued during last two years we have actually seen this to be a success story which is in a way asking that this is something which we require and there is a success story behind that it has already been done so if it has been done once it can always be done again and again absolutely sir and sir what uh, is has there been an expansion from making the arm and equipment to uh, making the ammunition for the artillery guns sir ammunition essentially as a company we had uh, for variety of reasons decided that uh, we leverage the existing uh, government facilities for that because we know that in spite of it being completely open uh, exception of course uh, last 2 to 3 years we see uh, that that complete openness has existed but in the earlier era when we got engaged into many of these programs we knew the explosives handling of explosives and dealing with it uh, in private sector was being discouraged so we said this is a segment we rather uh, leverage and work in a relationship mode with ordnance factories uh, i can also tell you today this working with ordnance factories is something that has come so handy a similar kind of uh, rocket launching system that we developed for uh, indian navy we actually had bought the barrels from ordnance factory i can say way back what 27 28 years back so there has been a very healthy i would say the respect for what our facilities Uh, that exist in the country in the form of what the government has invested in fact recently we won uh, we were l1 on a big program but on this particular program the gun uh, that actually we using the basic armament has come again from modernus factory now we been able to leverage what exist in this country put in whole lot of new technologies to make that extremely high accurate and build a complete solution around right from search radars to track radars to fire control systems to electro optics to make a complete command control system around to be able to perform a very very differentiated kind of a capability so this is something which uh, to my mind is uh, a way forward that since today's goal primarily is being atmanirbhar uh, we have certain capabilities in house we obviously have certain capabilities within the industry rather than every organization getting end to end right from ammunition to the complete weapon system we believe it's only right that we leverage and use each other's strengths right absolutely i agree absolutely with what you're saying you know we have to move together and move ahead oh uh, sir one uh, thing which comes at my uh, you know in my mind at this moment is that uh, when we are talking of uh, make in india and we talk of uh, you know uh, manufacturing there is one little gruntle which we always hear as journalists which is 
the lack of testing facilities. Now, how do you manage that when you are making artillery products? In fact, uh, we identified this. I must tell you when uh, we got the Bajra contract, although we may we have done about hundreds of contracts by then, but since the numbers were smaller in those contracts, one has always found, uh, you know, uh, that uh, you can go to any of the existing test facilities, the relationship with DRDO that we enjoy for 38 years actually has been helping. So it's for uh, requesting the moment there's a free slot in any of the DRDO facility. Our experience is as long-term partner to DRDO, we have always been able to get. Of course, you will not get it the day you want it, but uh, of course, if a DRDO's uh, facility and their own program is not under testing, they certainly would be in a position to, you know, allow you to do that. Now, when we had a large uh, uh, program, and uh, I just uh, looked at, at that point in time, that uh, if we don't uh, uh, sort of deliver it on time, just the 5% LD could have meant a few hundred crores. And I said, uh, if the facility is not available at my backend call, it's going to be uh, far too expensive for us as a company. And we decided to design and build all those test facilities within. So that's essentially where uh, this award, what you see in front, actually came out of. Because we, we thought at that point in time, if I make 100 systems, I'm, the total time we had, uh, because about uh, 14,000 uh, part components physically had to be indigenized and qualified. So by the time you qualify those, you knew that about 18 months uh, will be gone. And of course, in the first uh, 10 guns that we delivered, we had about 25% indigenous content. But from the 11th onwards, we raised it to 75 and then we raised it to 83. Now, this qualification stages is what call for enormous amount of testing at every type of that test facility we created at one single place. And uh, that is essentially where the total, I would say, risk that we would have taken by not creating was completely mitigated. Yes, we put in more money into a physical asset, but I believe those assets will remain not only for us to use, but anybody who today builds, let's say, any tank in this country can utilize this, especially the western part. Because eastern part, I'm sure uh, somebody can go into ordnance factory at uh, Audi. Audi has uh, some of those facilities. DRDO certainly has CVRD has some of those facilities in place. And of course, we'll be able to utilize whatever is in the western side. Anybody does it. There's a facility at Hazira which can get utilized there. Right, absolutely, sir. And as in when we continue and we talk about this supply chain, uh, what I wanted to understand was that you had a specific supply chain for Vajra. And then uh, now that you know you are waiting for a follow-on order, which I think you know it's a rumor in the corridors that uh, Vajra is getting a follow-on order. Your supply chain, sir, is it totally indigenous or you still have a certain percentage of content which is coming from Vajra? Yeah. The four systems uh, remain to be imported, and I would say it's because of uh, our ordering process. If it's 100 guns ordered, you won't actually indigenize everything. It's just not remunerative. As a result, of course, a major four system that we today continue to be importing is the main engine, the transmission, the main gun, and some small amount of engine control related electronics. The rest of the entire Vajra uh, today is indigenous. So that's essentially where we built a supply chain, which was about uh, more than 100, 150, 200 uh, major tier ones. And below them are two more tiers of uh, industry, more than about 1,100 uh, industry partners who actually produce Vajra. Of course, uh, coming from uh, multiple states of this uh, country, about five states, and Larsen Dobro's factories in each of these states actually became the first hub. So it's a hub and spoke from these hubs came to the mega hub at uh, Hazira. As a result, a factory which we started building, assuming that we'll build four in a month, actually could do 10 a month at peak of production. 
and uh, more than i would say about 90 93% we could uh, do robotization in terms of the physical processes to manufacture so that's essentially where we got amazing uh, consistency in what we produce and of course a great kind of a quality uh, matter of satisfaction why the gunners love us is because all the 100 guns went out of the factory including the subsequent trials a varieties of things that happened uh, they all went without a single observation on the qa that's an achievement absolutely and sir uh, i'll ask you once uh, is there a follow on order and if so for how many sir follow on order certainly uh, is uh, under pipeline is what one keeps hearing uh, as you said uh, as of today the rfp is still uh, not in hand so it's a bit premature to say it certainly is there or how much is there. But we all know that uh, it's being processed. Ministry is very, very keen. Uh, more than ministry, it's the user who is very, very keen. Because the, the previous uh, army chief, right when he was the vice chief onwards, when General Rawat was the chief, uh, they have all been seeing the system. Uh, if, if, every uh, you know, major... Uh, I would say decision maker in the country has been to Hazira to see uh, how it is being produced. Prime Minister himself came for uh, dedicating the factory to the nation. So this is essentially where they see a very differentiated capability when we actually have a dire need in our uh, borders today. So it's you know extending a hand both ways. Uh, you have a situation which warrants more equipment. You have an um, extremely high level of indigenous content which essentially Essentially, minimizing your through life costs into the direct usage of this weapon system into future. And of course, uh, and under this circumstances, it's uh, something which has happened, uh, I would say, relatively at a good uh, uh, kind of a price or a cost, uh, considering what is happening globally. Uh, with Ukraine, we know that if we didn't have any anything directly done by ourselves, your, your fire control system can completely be blocked. You won't be able to fire a single shot uh, if you remain uh, import driven. Uh, we had some of these situations uh, uh, right in the Vajra program, not that somebody could stop it, but any modification because the basic algorithms and the software and the intellectual property that has gone in is indigenous. It can always be modified. When we went to high altitude, you had to make changes in the software. Now, you didn't have to go to a foreigner, wait for something. Over two days, three days, all these things could get done. And that's essentially where uh, a capability that once uh, gets built remains with the country and remains with the armed forces for exploitation for decades together. Tomorrow, yet another environment, yet another kind of a scenario they are into. Or yet another additional capability they want out of those guns is for asking because it's an indigenous uh, control uh, on the basic IP. Right, sir. And finally, my question to you would be, sir, that uh, we have a state-of-the-art product. We have facilities to make it. We also have a very huge export market, which is there for you to tap. Now, have you thought of Vajra being a part of uh, your export plan uh, for especially the third world countries? Because, uh, you know, we, they are the ones who are in need and uh, we could get them, give them at a much uh, lesser rate than what the Americans and Britishers do or the Europeans do. So do we see a market for Vajra in the export sections? We certainly see a market for Vajra. I think more because uh, the Vajra is not canine thunder. And the Vajra, obviously, wherever you have high temperature environments, you have combination of high and low temperature, you have you know, dust, sand uh, kind of uh, environment. That's essentially where uh, a Vajra has proven itself in each of those kind of uh, environments. So that versatility which is built into this, and that's where the name differentiates from K9 Thunder to uh, K9 Vajra. Of course, there's a legacy of the K9, which comes in into the product, but uh, there's a differentiated capability. As a result, certainly there are uh, discussions, I would say, uh, going on uh, 
uh, far too early to say anything definitive about an export contract. We also know while we produced Vajraj and uh, delivered them uh, in time, those are the years we had the last two years uh, serious COVID. And for anybody in the world, it means that uh, your, your procurement plans had to be deferred because the money the country had had other better usage for looking after the people. And of course, as times pass, we'll see something developing in this direction as well. Thank you very much, sir. It was wonderful as always to speak with you. And, you know, uh, I think on a day which is so special to all of us, it, we couldn't have begun with anything about Indian, a company we all love to call our own. And uh, it is, it's, it is, we keep saying Sangeeta Ji, Lassan Dubro is uh, for people of India. Uh, there's nobody who owns this company. <laughs> there's no one owner. All of us, and it's a pleasure doing things, which, uh, you know, in artillery call itself, is the god of the war. You know, to be able to do something of that kind, uh, it uh, winners one after another. Absolutely, sir. And we really look forward to, you know, interviewing you again and again and getting to know the absolute advancement LNT does for this nation in the four, three forces. And I also add four guard to it so that's why i wanted to say four so i mean i have seen you doing so much for them also so, so i mean we are look, looking forward to sir tapping lnt's in its man parson and thank you so much for being here on our chat show hope to see you again sir very soon in the near future thank you thank you sangeeta ji uh, see you see you chaitali see you some other thank time you so much, sir. thank you so much for your time it has been great listening to you as usual and uh, definitely we look forward to meeting you at DefExpo now. Thank you so much, sir. Sure. Thank you.